Welcome again Sagittarius, Dedici Toth here from astrology.com.au. Thanks for joining me. It's September 2015. Very, very significant transit is taking place this month. One of the most important, uh, in fact, that I would have uh, revealed to you uh, in the many years that I've been doing this, and that is the transit of Saturn into your sun sign, <clears throat> which takes place on the 18th of September 2015. If you go back in your life, backwards, around 30 years ago, if you were alive at that time, um, then you might start to get some sort of understanding about how this planet is going to affect you again. Most people have a terrible view of Saturn because it is a planet of constriction, it's a planet of privation, it's a planet of restraint, it can cause fear, separation, all of those words which on a superficial uh, you know, glance seem to be negative. But actually, if we take a look at this, it's been transiting through your 12th house, which is a revisionary house. And there are some other planets I'm going to talk about this month that have been uh, doing revisionary work like Venus. Mercury will also be going retrograde. These, these revisionary cycles they happen for a month or two, and then they move forward. But Saturn has been, for the last two and a half years, going through your 12th house. And that is, along with the 9th house, one of the karmic houses representing the past. Looking back over the mistakes, what you've done wrong, that along with the 8th house... <clears throat> You'll be thinking about all these sorts of things, especially with the moon commencing its transit in the sign of Aries, your fifth house with the south node. The south node also is your past. Saturn transit out, transiting out of this should, I hope, indicate that you've learnt some lessons from the past, what you've done. And so therefore the restriction which occurs through this revision if you're a person who is upwardly mobile spiritually speaking <laughs> you'll be entertaining this idea of okay where can i contain myself where can i cut back what do i need to do now given that i have an understanding of what this review has revealed to me This could be limiting your contact with people, especially those people that are of no use to you anymore. Could be limiting your expression to some extent. You know, for Sagittarius, you, you know, you're one of the uh, open, gregarious, upbeat personality types. <coughs> Having sat and transiting this locality over the next two and a half years, because that's how long it will take to fully transit Sagittarius. And depending on what date in Sagittarius you were born uh, will determine the, you know, the intensity of, of this transit. If you're born early in Sagittarius, you're going to feel the effects of this planet very, very soon, immediately. So I wanted to raise this issue. We're going to be talking more about this as time goes on, but it is a significantly important transit. Um... And it may impact, again, as I said, on those of you born in the early part, it may impact upon the current very positive transit of the Sun and Jupiter in your 10th house of career. Saturn will move slowly over the next uh, few weeks to create a uh, powerful reverse square aspect to your ruling planet Jupiter in the 10th house. Sun has just passed that transit. That's a good transit, but it also has its downside uh, being what we call combustion. Uh, Jupiter would have been burnt up by the rays of the sun over the last uh, few weeks, couple of weeks or so. Well, at least over the last 10 days or so. Uh, that's moving away now. It still gives you the opportunity to be successful in what you're doing during this cycle, during this month. But success, as you know, is not always a bed of roses. It comes with its responsibilities, it comes with its restrictions, it comes with its demands from those higher up. And these are all the sorts of 
patterns that are emerging now in your uh, horoscope. Your other beneficial planet, Mars, in the ninth house, that's there up until it's transit out of uh, Leo into the sign of Virgo on the 25th. So there's a few significant transits here. That's going to uh, push you up even further. But you know what they say, success comes, the greater the success, the greater the sacrifice, I think is what I'm trying to say to you this month with the transits as they are. Now, we talk about this first day or two of the month being one of uh, intense revision because of the association of the moon. The eighth ruler of your horoscope uh, in the fifth house. Fifth house is also one of the spiritual houses, the house of children. It's also the house of um, the initiated mind. Western astrologers aren't aware of that. They take the third house only and the ninth house as the higher mind. Whereas in fact, the, uh, the fifth house also has to do with the spiritual mind. So this gives you an insight into yourself. It can be an, an initiatory period where you look at things from the perspective of your third eye rather than these two eyes. It gives you an insight. It can make you more prone to meditation, to prayer, to reciting mantras, singing hymns, listening to music that is uh, ambient, that can float you off into, you know, the astral world, that sort of thing. And you probably need that given the, as I just said, the demands of these other planets in your 10th house and Saturn moving into this um, important sun sign of Sagittarius for you. You've also got this <coughs> retrograde Venus, which is ruling your 6th house and 11th house. 6th house is your work. It's your health. It's your enemies, it's your debts, it's a disease. The retrogression of this planet is not a welcome retrogression. It continues that retrograde uh, backwards stepping motion till the 6th. Thereafter, it'll take a week or two for it to get back into its normal course and to relieve you of some of these uh, uh, problems. It will move into the 10th house for... Sagittarians, the career sector, making its conjunction with Jupiter. It's going to diminish some of your opportunities, I think, at that time and could put you at odds with some of those people uh, that are your higher ups. And more on that next month. But I just wanted to give you a little preview of that and how it might be influencing you. You don't want that sixth ruler to be up too high in the chart. It can cause some health problems to you, to you or to the people you work with. Perhaps some of those pressures that I'm talking about um, can be previewed by taking a look at the health of your co-workers, the health of your employers. Because if they crash, then it looks like you're going to be landed with that extra work over the coming month or so. So try to get up on your work. Try to get ahead, because if that happens, you don't want to be doing someone else's work and your own work as well. Relationships are, sh are, sh are shown by um, Mars and also by uh, Mercury. Mercury is going to give us more of an insight into your long-term relationships, such as your marital relationships. Uh, that planet currently in the 11th house of friendship is good, but it does uh, grind to a halt by also going retrograde uh, on the 18th. It'll be stationary retrograde, then it starts to move backwards. So there are some issues there that you need to uh, work with. It also rules your professional sector. Uh, I've talked a bit about that, but I do want to talk more about how this impacts upon uh, your future prospects with the one you love. If you're uh, married or if you're in a committed relationship, there could be some sort of uh, revision of, uh, you know, what your destiny with this person is. You know, are you diverging or converging? in terms of your belief systems, in terms of your ideals, in terms of your practical objectives. The 11th house of the horoscope has a lot to do with, you know, what you desire and what you want. So this could be a question of what you want and desire together. 
And if it's been divergent, then of course you have to address that issue. And that could be what the retrograde Mercury will do during its um, backward motion um, in September. Talk about it. Don't be afraid to revise, to go back over old ground. Talk to your partner. What do they want? What do you want? You may disagree on a few points, but you're never going to know unless you talk about it. That uh, eclipse on the 28th is an important one as the month concludes. Again, in your fifth house. Something to do with your children, if you do have children. It has a lot to do with your creativity. <clears throat> it's a full moon, so you need to really express yourself at this time. And the fifth house is also your creative activities and hobbies. So if you've let that go, now is the time to revive that. It could actually be the counterbalance you need against all this other heavy stuff going on in your work and your relationships and with that Saturn and Mars transit moving out of those areas. So I hope that's helped. You know, you can get more on this, more detail in a textual format at astrology.com.au, uh, my website there. I hope to see you there. You can look at the daily, monthly, yearly readings, lots of free readings there. I always talk about that. No charge. A um, little bit of a charge if you want to talk to someone like me or some of my associates, but that will be a much more in-depth analysis. If you need that, you know where to contact me. And don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about our channel. Hope it's useful. See you next month. Take care, Sagittarius. Bye-bye.